Hello and welcome to the First United Methodist Church in Madisonville, Tennessee for our virtual online service from our sanctuary. I'm Leanne Strickland and I'd like to welcome our members and our guests to the live streaming worship service on December 27th, 2020. As you've probably already noticed, we've had some technical difficulties this morning with our streaming. Uh, this is the result, we believe, of the Nashville bombing that occurred a couple days ago uh, that impacted our internet, cell reception uh, across the state and southeast. So bear with us. We think we're good now, um, but hopefully we will have an uninterrupted service this morning. The folks on Facebook will not be able to see the slides. If you're watching on Facebook Live, we are not able to get the slides in the corner of your screen this morning because that is plan B or C or D to get it streaming live on Facebook. So thanks to Richard for having all those extra plans to make sure we get our uh, service online this morning. Now, regardless of if you are watching live or the recording of this uh, service on Facebook or YouTube afterwards, we want you to let us know that you're engaging in our service. So please record your attendance on our homepage, oneumcm.com. That's numeral one, umcm.com. Record your attendance there, or if you're on your mobile device, click on the hamburger icon on the top left of your screen. Just a couple of quick questions and click OK. The Good Shepherd this morning, or the Good Shepherd currently still has a lot of needs this, at this time, as you can well imagine. Uh, the holidays can be a tough time for a lot of families. So they need kid-friendly lunch items like ramen noodles or mac and cheese, individually wrapped snacks, other non-perishables. Um, and likewise with our blessing box here in our parking lot, um, I came by yesterday morning and there was not much in there. So uh, if you have an opportunity to fill it up, please do so as you shop for groceries or clean out your cabinets. Um, and also if you have needs, that's what it's there for. So if you need assistance, come by the blessing box and hopefully they will there will be something there that can assist you. Now, we cannot wait to get back to our in-person worship services, but the number of COVID-19 cases and deaths in Monroe County continue to climb through the roof. We can all work together to make getting back together possible by limiting our gathering, continuing social distancing, wear your masks, and frequent hand washing. Um, I know a lot of families in this church as well as in our community are being hit hard right now with COVID, so. I know this will be addressed later as we pray, but please pray that we get control of the virus and hopefully the vaccine will start doing its job. Now take a moment to digitally greet the members of our church family and our guests uh, via text or Facebook message. May the peace of Christ be with you. Also, also, we are getting notices that the sound quality is not so good. That is also due to internet bandwidth. We're okay. So if you didn't hear that, we have some issues with sound this morning. It has to do with the internet bandwidth being affected, uh, again, by the Nashville bombing. So um, just bear with us this morning. Turn it up if you need to. Now our call to worship. Excuse me. Our call to worship this morning is, O come all ye faithful. The words of music are in the downloadable uh, assistance for the service that you will find on our website. And, and also those of you who can see the screen, they're on the screen.
Good morning. We welcome you all to praising the Lord together this morning to the worship of the Lord here at First United Methodist Church, as Leanne said. We want to take a moment and share in a call to worship that's from the Old Testament book of Lamentations. If you can read along with the screen, share these words. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his, his compassions never fail. fail. They are new every morning. Great, great is thy faithfulness. faithfulness. Let us join together to praise our Lord this morning in singing our first hymn of praise. Good Christian friends, rejoice. sisters, when we worship the Lord every week, we take a moment to remind ourselves of the Christian faith as we believe for 2,000 years since the time of the New Testament, and, and share a few words of a statement of faith. Today, the statement of faith comes from the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. this morning, and I hate to list them all, but we certainly want to mention uh, uh, we've been in contact with Patty Wilford the last day or two. Billy, her husband, continues to struggle with his battle with COVID-19. 
He, they had moved him to the ICU at Sweetwater Hospital. And Patty visited him for a short while on Friday. So far, Billy is not on a ventilator, but continue to pray for Billy Williford. He is at Sweetwater Hospital and certainly needs your prayers as the Patty and all three of the girls as well. Uh, John Shearer. John Shearer is also battling COVID-19. He's improved some, but he's at a, his energy level is very low. He's been to the ER, I think, three times in the last week or two. Uh, the ER at uh, William at Blunt Memorial Hospital. Tate, their son, their teenage son, has also battled COVID-19. He's recovered, but is still not 100%. So pray for the Sheriff family. Pray for them. Uh, Emma Tate is in the hospital again. Uh, not been able to make touch, uh, touch base with Emma about that. So please keep Emma in your prayers. I think she may be out there at Shannondale. Oh. I'm not sure. Well, the latest word is Emma may be at Shannondale, may be out of the hospital at Shannondale. So certainly keep Emma Tate in your prayers. And continue to pray for Howard Harvey. Uh, right now, he's at the Life Care Center in Blount County, uh, off of uh, um, uh, in Louisville. <clears throat> and uh, please keep Debbie Denton in your prayers. That's Heather Jones' mother. Debbie has been battling cancer for a while, and now has a brain tumor that is growing quickly. Heather is asking that we pray for a miracle. So pray for a miracle for Debbie Denton. Also, be in prayer for Marlene Tierce's sister, Sandy. She fell off a horse a few days ago and broke several ribs. <clears throat> Marlene is taking care of her right now, so pray for both of them. Pray for Marlene and pray for her sister, Sandy. Pray for the family of Brian Hembrick. That's Wendy Poole's brother. Uh, pray for the family of Roy Bledsoe, who passed away on Wednesday from COVID. His wife, Sarah, also has COVID-19. And Lois Green asks us to uh, be praying this morning for her sister-in-law, Pat Cloud. She seems to be improving in her battle with COVID, uh, as is Pat's husband, Gary. Uh, also pray for Ira Lee, Barbara Pennington's brother, and pray for the Harold and the Allen family. <clears throat> Continue to pray for Debbie Strickland. <clears throat> That's Todd Strickland's mother. And she, she's a nurse at uh, Sweet Row Hospital. She is battling COVID. Uh, continue to pray for Beatrice Irwin. Continue to pray for Orland Upton and Jerry Crowder, friend of Kevin Shaw's family. And pray for Ben Barger as he recuperates and struggles with the, uh, he's he recovered from COVID-19, but has been battling a pneumonia. Uh, pray for Nancy Manning. Pray for Terry Robbins. That's Janet Tweed's mother. Pray for Debbie Tucker. Pray for Lisa Cheney, Kim Hughes, Reese and Annette McDonald, and Roy Bledson, friends of the Cabots. Pray for Marilyn DePew, one of our members of our congregation for many, many years. Pray for Marilyn. Uh, pray for Vicki Henderson, a friend of Mary Kefauver. Pray for John Hoovenagel as he recovers from his broken leg. Pray for Kat Ahart and Barbara Bays. Pray for the Grubb family. Pray for Sam and for Kay and for Joe. Pray for, uh, pray for Terry Slack, a friend of Jennifer McKenzie. Pray for Jay Brown, Reba's brother. Pray for Joan and Hoyle Akers, friends of Lois, Lois Green. And pray for those who are battling cancer, such as Clifton Greenwood, Dwayne Peters, Rosie Distler, Mabel Graham, Dora Nelson, Margaret Marshall, Pat Harvey, and, and all their families, and for others who are battling cancer. And pray for all the people who are battling COVID-19. and Pray for those who are providing for their care. <clears throat> and of course, pray for all those in assisted living quarters and in nursing homes, those who are not able to get out. Uh, also, and I'm gonna ask you to be praying for my son, Benjamin. Benjamin's got a, a, I don't know, like an infected uh, uh, tooth, uh, and he's been having some pain, and he couldn't get in to see the dentist on a couple days before Christmas, and 
and so he's been he enjoyed Christmas holidays as a good day to deal with pain in his jaw. Uh, so uh, he when I took him to the uh, clinic yesterday, and they got him some antibiotics and and uh, taken some strong ibuprofen and Tylenol and also pray for Benjamin. He's going to try to see a dentist on Monday. So be praying for my son if you would. Uh, are there any other prayer requests from those who are among us this morning? No need to mention. Well, let's bow our heads and hearts and go to the Lord with our prayers this morning. Shall we pray? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you, O Lord, for the Christmas season that we have had. And even though there is uncertainty in our country and other nations because of this coronavirus pandemic that's sweeping the world, we have had the privilege of again praising you for the birth of your blessed Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And now we look, Lord, to the new year, 2,021 years since the birth of Jesus. Bless each one, Lord, who gather together in spirit as we praise you and pray and worship you this morning. Wherever we might be, at home or in other places, Lord, we are joined together in your spirit. And, Lord, we pray that you will open our eyes and ears so that the joy of worshiping and praising you is evident in all of our lives, so that the blessing of studying your word is clear, so that the songs and scriptures of old brim with newness and meaning. Dear Lord, many resolutions will be made in the next few days. By your grace, may we all resolve to follow Christ into your house and out into the world to love you, to know you, and to serve you in all that we do in the year to come. We lift up to you, Lord, our concerns. We pray for our country and all the countries of the world, people all over this planet as they struggle with the coronavirus pandemic. Now that the, uh, the first of the vaccines are here and being spread around, some uh, 53,000 or more people in Tennessee have already received the first dose of the vaccine we pray lord that you will give us all wisdom and guidance in in protecting ourselves and our families and friends uh with the still with the social distancing the hand washing the wearing masks and so forth as the uh, vaccine begins to be spread more and more and even more vaccines newer vaccines will become available in the next few weeks to come we pray, O Lord, that you will bless the doctors and nurses and medical professionals who seek to keep us all healthy and well. Bless them, Lord, in hospitals and clinics around the country and around the world, really. Lord, continue to give wisdom to those who are working on the vaccines and uh, uh, providing vaccines available in the next few months, the next three to five months all over this country and really all around the world that every people in every continent or every country will have vaccines. We pray, Lord, that as the vaccines go about in the world, we pray, Lord, that the good news of your love and salvation in Jesus Christ might continue to spread also around the world and inoculate the people of this world against the, the, the judgment of sin against the, the dangers of, of not knowing Christ as Lord and Savior. And instead, Lord, we pray that people on every continent, as they are inoculated and given vaccines against this coronavirus, they might also have the vaccine of your love, of your forgiveness, that they might discover and they may learn some for the first time, hearing the first time, that there is a Savior who loves them and has an eternal plan for their lives, not only on this planet, but for all of eternity. And Lord, we pray that this good news of the love of Jesus uh, might continue to go out across this world, that people in speaking every kind of language, looking every different kind of way, different skin colors and different clothes and habits in their cultures, Lord, we pray that people all over this planet may hear and receive the good news of your love and salvation in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
We pray, Lord, as well, that you will give your love and comfort to those who have lost loved ones in recent weeks uh, to the COVID-19 and to other illnesses and diseases. We pray, Lord, that you will show your love and comfort and strength to these families and help them to know the grace and the mercy of your everlasting love for their loved ones and for their families. Oh Lord, we pray that you will bring healing and strength to all those persons we have mentioned this morning. We pray, Lord, that you will cure the diseases, heal people from their illnesses, uh, combat this COVID-19 virus, and help people to recover those who are in hospitals and ICUs in every state of this nation. Lord, there are ICUs that are filling up uh, in, in almost every city and every state. We pray, Lord, that you will bless these, these, these persons who are sick with COVID-19 and help them to recuperate and grow stronger and defeat this virus. And we pray, O oh Lord, for those who are struggling with other illnesses, those who are battling cancers. We pray, Lord, that you will bring healing into their lives and we ask that the greatest advances of modern medicine might be used for uh, helping in the healing process that your spirit works in their lives. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you will help us to serve you more gladly each and every day in this year to come. Help us walk with you more closely each and every day, Lord. Help us put our trust in you more fully and completely. And help us, Lord, be a witness to others about your love and salvation in the deeds we do, in the lives we live, and in the words that we say. For we ask this and pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Well, we want to praise the Lord this morning with another hymn. And then we're going to have a moment with, uh, with the children, the boys and girls. So uh, as we get ready to sing this hymn, if you'll ask your sons, daughters, grandsons, granddaughters to get nearer to the TV or to the uh, monitor this morning as we sing Silent Night, Holy Night.
great hymn, great song. Well, let's say uh, if our boys and girls are gathered around here this morning, we want to think about Jesus' birth. And I think you all have heard the story a number of times about Jesus' birth, right? How he was born in a stable, which probably was a cave behind the Bethlehem Holiday Inn or some little hotel. And uh, he was laid in a manger, which is a feeding trough for the first city birth. But after Jesus' birth, what happened next? What happened next? Well, these wise men, these magi, these astrologers probably from Persia, came. They've been following a star for weeks and weeks. And they got to the, uh, to the king's palace in Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. And they, they inquired of King Herod, where is this next king to be born? And of course, Herod didn't like the idea of this. He already had a couple sons that he wanted to become king when he died. So uh, uh, he found out where, where the religious leaders, the Jewish spiritual leaders, and, and uh, uh, students of the Bible, of the Hebrew Bible, where the prophecy was of the coming king, the Messiah, and he was to be born in Bethlehem. Well, the wise men went to Bethlehem, they found Jesus, they presented gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But what happened next after that? We all know that story from the beginning of the Gospel of, of Matthew chapter 2. Well, the wise men were warned in a dream by an angel of the Lord to go back, to, don't go back to Jerusalem to King Herod, go back to Persia another way. And so when King Herod found out that the wise men had avoided him, he was so angry. He sent soldiers to cause trouble in Bethlehem looking for the, the possible next king of Israel, the baby Jesus. But God warned Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay, where, stay there until I tell you. For Herod will soon search for the child in order to kill him. So Joseph got up and during the night took the child and his mother to Egypt. <clears throat> he got the baby Jesus and Mary out of harm's way. Now what King Herod did was terrible. It's terrible that he sent these soldiers into Bethlehem to find uh, the baby Jesus who was to be the next king of Israel. But he wasn't going to be the king that Herod was afraid of. Jesus had come to be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. But because uh, God had warned Joseph and he took the baby and Mary to Egypt, he got them out of harm's way completely. And there's an interesting thing. All the gold, frankincense, and myrrh, we never hear of it again. And that may be because it financed their trip to Egypt. They were able to use the gold. Joseph could have sold the frankincense and the myrrh to give them enough money to get to Egypt and live for like a year or two, maybe, before Herod died. And they got back and they finally traveled back to Nazareth when Jesus was just you know, probably a toddler or something. Well, God always wants to protect his chosen people. He will protect each of us and give us guidance, even when times are troubling. And when other people have ill will towards us, God wants to see us through. So let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you and praise you for your gracious and saving love in our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that whatever tough times might come to any of us, to our families, loved ones, friends. We pray, Lord, that just as you guided Joseph and Mary to take care of the baby Jesus, you will also guide us and help protect us from the ups and downs of this world that, that will come to all of us. Give us guidance, we pray, Lord, and help us know your love, your will, and your protection and guidance each and every day. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, we want to take a moment 
to remember this is the time most Sundays that we take up our weekly offering. Now, most of us are not able to just drop our offering in the plate. We were doing that when we were able to worship out in the parking lot. Uh, but uh, right now, it's uh, 30 degrees at 9 o'clock this morning, and, and I think we made the right decision to not try to hold worship out in the parking lot today uh, or the last couple of weeks. But still, we want to continue to uh, pray and praise the Lord, and we want to continue to support our church and, and the ministry of our congregation uh, in the Madisonville area and, and beyond as part of the United Methodist Church. We reach all corners of the globe to spread the good news of Jesus Christ and to spread his good work amongst all people. So if you, if you have your check or, or cash, uh, you can continue to support the Lord's work in a number of different ways. You can mail your check to the church at First United Methodist Church, P.O. Box 157, Madisonville, Tennessee, 37354. Or you can uh, bring your check by the church office sometime. Just call first. To make sure one of us is here, either Reba or Sue or myself. We're not in the office quite as much right now since COVID-19 is being such a problem for the people of Monroe County. So we're trying to stay home a little more and stay out of everyone's way. But uh, call first and we'll, we'll uh, 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 if we're not here, we can meet you down here. Uh, or, or Maybe the best thing to do is to look online at our website at, at uh, 1umcm.com. And there's all kind of information there on the church website of what you may do. You can give online. You can work out a way to give uh, just whatever you feel like it or give weekly. And it'll explain all that kind of stuff that, that, uh, that uh, I would bore us with, with trying to go into all of it now. So those are some of the ways that you can continue to support the Lord's work uh, by cash check or online using a credit card or a bank card. Well, let's pray. Let's thank God for everything. Almighty God, we thank you and praise you that you have given us so much. You have supported us. You have led us so much in our lives. You have enabled us to use our gifts and talents and abilities, our skills, that we have learned and acquired in so many ways to provide for ourselves and our families. And we thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the honor of continuing to support your work. We pray that our gift, our tithe, our offering this week will go for the work of Jesus Christ here at First United Methodist Church in Madisonville, and that it will go for the work of Jesus even beyond this church through our conference and through the United Methodist Church at large, that we can reach with the good news people all over this country and all over this world to let them know that there is a Savior who loves them and who wants them to live in joy and peace forever and all. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you will bless these gifts and tithes and bless us all that we might be a blessing to others. For Jesus' sake, for we pray in his name. Amen. Well, this morning, it's time for us to turn to the Bible for our Bible lesson. I'm sorry? Singing. Oh, I'm sorry. There is a special song. I almost ran over it. Reba, you can sing a lot better than I can preach. Take it away, sister.
Thank you, Reba. Thank you. Well, uh, we were just about to go home after that. That's okay. <laughs> but I want to take a moment and read some verses from Colossians chapter 3 this morning. Um, I know the, uh, the uh, screen in front of you may, may say verses uh, uh, 1 through 6. Through 14. I think I'm going to read all 14 verses here. Uh, you can follow along. If you have your own Bible at home, go ahead and, and turn to it. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 3, starting at verse 1. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever is in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. These are the ways that you once followed when you were living that kind of life. But now you must put aside all of that, get rid of all those things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free. But Christ is all and in all. As God's chosen ones, then, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us pray. Almighty God, our gracious Lord, we thank you for your, for your immense love and care for our lives. And we ask, O oh Lord, that as we think about this year that is ending and the new year that is to start on Friday, we pray, Lord, that you will help us to know your love each and every day in the new year and help us, Lord, to share your love, to spread your love around amongst everyone. Lord, give us the joy of our Lord Jesus each day. And Lord, help us as we look into your word for just a couple of minutes this morning. Help us understand how we might walk with you more closely and serve you more fully and be more filled with your joy each and every day. For we ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, I knew this man for many years. One, one day, one afternoon, he stepped off the elevator at the hospital looking very distinguished. He was about 60 years old with brown hair and a close cropped brown beard and mustache and a little overweight. He wore a gray tweed sport coat with a dark pants and a checker tie. He walked up to the nurse's station and introduced himself. My name is Dr. Balch and I came to visit Mrs. Smith. The nurse pointed him to the room and began to tell him about Mrs. Smith's exact condition in precise medical terms, and Dr. Baltz told the nurse to stop. He said he was a pastor. He had a doctorate in counseling, and Mrs. Smith was one of his church members, and he didn't follow all that medical lingo. Well, the nurse laughed and said, well, I'm sorry, but you look like a doctor. I mean a medical doctor, some kind of specialist or something. Well, the old saying goes, the clothes make the man or the person. What we wear can sometimes be a kind of uniform that tells others who we are and what we do. For instance, a lot of preachers wear a robe during worship and a suit, or at least a sport coat and tie, when they're out visiting people or 
doing other functions in the community that they're sort of working. It's sort of a preacher's uniform, like today. A, a doctor wears his or her white coat in the hospital. That's a doctor's uniform. A police officer usually wears the, the blue and a badge. That is the police officer's uniform. And you can always tell a Marine dress uniform or a Navy dress uniform, Marine blue versus Navy white. In a similar way, the Bible tells us that when we choose to be Christians, when we choose to follow Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our outward actions and behavior should demonstrate our inward spiritual experience and should say something about who we are and what we believe. We should put off the old behaviors and attitudes that characterize the old life or the non-Christian lifestyle and put on the new clothes of the Christian lifestyle. By the way, uh, how do you do for Christmas? Do you get a lot of gifts? Do you get any clothes among your gifts? Some new shirts, maybe, or blouses? Some new sweaters? Well, as you think about wearing your new clothes in the new year, let us remember what the Apostle Paul said about taking off the garments of the non-Christian nature and putting on the clothing of Christ. First of all, we take off the pagan or the non-Christian nature. Now, you would, I hope you would agree with me that it would be highly inappropriate for a nurse or a doctor to dress in dirty old blue jeans, an old sweatshirt, and ragged tennis, tennis shoes to perform surgery, right? Wouldn't it be? It would be inappropriate for an auto mechanic to put on a tuxedo with tails when he was going to work in a greasy garage, wouldn't it? Well, then it's inappropriate for us as disciples and followers of Jesus Christ to do and act some of the ways others do in our world. Those who don't know Christ, how they might act. We must be careful to discard inappropriate behavior or clothing for Christ's sake. For instance, the apostle wrote in, in here in chapter 3, verse 5, that we should put away the temptings and teachings and teasings of our sex obsessed world, sensual and pure. I read in a, in a, in a newsletter some uh, uh, all, all over 20 years ago that, uh, that a uh, uh, United Methodist evangelist uh, mentioned that, that in the several years since the, uh, since the Clarence Thomas Supreme Court hearings, this country had learned a lot about the problems of, of today with sexual harassment. And he wrote, is there any surprise that all kinds of sexual harassment goes on nowadays when kids are fed all kinds of suggestive images by TV and music every day? Well, that was over 20 years ago. Are things better 20 years later? I don't think so. Well, as Christians, we need to put away those kind of temptations, those teasing, teasings of our sex-saturated society, Determine that we're going to live for Jesus Christ and for his values. We're going to respect women and men, not using them as objects for lust, and respecting the sanctity and privacy of a couple's bedroom. Second thing the apostle mentions is grasping greed is an attitude that is inappropriate for a Christian. In verse, also in verse 5, coveting is the Old Testament term. It's an overpowering desire to have and to seek for material things. And the apostle, that's really idolatry. It is setting up material things as a god or a goddess in one's heart. So one preacher once said, in a materialistic and highly competitive society in which success often is judged in terms of things that people possess, the followers of Jesus Christ must beware lest she or he be captured by the same secular and earthly scale of value. Third thing the apostle mentioned was an evil disposition. That has to be discarded also. Another preacher said, Christ Jesus came into the world to do more than just to save our souls. By the gift of his Holy Spirit, he seeks to Christianize our disposition, our attitudes and temperament. It is necessary that we be willing and eager to forsake 
all those traits and attitudes which are disruptive and harmful both to ourselves and to others. Let us ask Christ each day for a transformation in this area of life and pray the same for each other. Another thing the apostle mentioned, he said, all dirty language and lying speech in verses 8, 9, and 10 have to be cast aside as unworthy garments. There is no proper place in the conversation of a dedicated Christian to, to, uh, uh, for profanity, dirty jokes, and falsehoods. With the help of God, we need to be clean and truthful in speech at all times. Just as the Apostle Paul encourages us to take off the old self, then he also encourages us to be clothed in new clothes for Christ. And we put on the new clothes for Christ in what he said starting in verse 12. And he told us basically, put on the character of Christ. You get a verbal picture in the New Testament of Jesus' character in the Gospels and even in some of the letters. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, those are the attitudes and actions of Jesus that the Holy Spirit seeks to reproduce in our lives if only we pray for them to happen and seek for that to happen. Uh, another thing the Apostle Paul said was put on the example of Christ. In verse 13, Christ's example was to forgive, to turn the other cheek. And those were profoundly explained in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 and 6 and 7. It should be no surprise then to see Jesus on the cross at the end of his life praying for those who are executing him. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. To be a Christian, uh, a follower of Christ, requires that we repudiate the right to retaliate in a vindictive manner towards those who treat us unfairly. And, and next, the apostle said, put on the love of Christ. In verse 14, now the love of Christ is and was not some syrupy, shallow, cheap, shoddy, emotional thing that people sometimes call love nowadays. The love of Christ was expressed in terms of kindness, thoughtfulness, helpfulness, and self-sacrifice. Jesus practiced a persistent, unbreakable spirit of goodwill, even toward those who crucified him. The Holy Spirit can help us to love others in this way. And the apostle said in verse 15, put on the peace of Christ. Now the peace of Christ means more than the absence of war and Tension. We need that in this world to be sure. But the peace of Christ is the result of harmonious relationships that Jesus brings to people into a right relationship with God, with others, and toward ourselves. And in verse 16, the apostle also said, put on the word of Christ. Well, this means that we need to read God's word and meditate on it and sing the songs and the great hymns both old hymns and new songs, sing them with gusto and feeling, not just at church, but at home, in a car, wherever we can sing to the Lord or turn from other things to God's Word. A long time ago, I heard that the average Christian watches 10 hours of television a day, but reads the Bible for less than one hour a week. Don't let that be true of you, because we become what we spend time doing. So spend time with the Lord in reading his word. And the Apostle Paul also tells us in verses 15, 16, and 17 to put on the thankfulness of Christ. In those three verses, Paul gave thanks and emphasized the importance of giving thanks. Jesus gave thanks to God on many occasions during his earthly ministry. We read about it in in the Gospel of Matthew and Mark and Luke and John. Jesus was a grateful person. But for us, this attitude, this habit is not natural or easy. It's something that has to be developed and cultivated. Try thanking God as you walk through your yard today, as you shovel snow, or as you're driving in the car today. Whatever you're doing, if you're, if you're hunkering down, although it's supposed to get warmer today, 
So you might be outside, but wherever you are, give thanks to God regularly, often, every day, several times a day. And one last thing. In verse 17, the apostle said, put on the name of Acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life. That is, that he's in control, that he guides you in every aspect of your life. And, and in everything you do, do it as if he were present and you were doing it for him as a service to him. You've heard me say before to encourage everyone to put on the character of Christ and to put on the peace of Christ and the love of Christ. And finally, let's also put on the witness, our witness for Christ. A missionary to India 100 years ago told the story of a Chinese pastor who always instructed new converts to Christ to witness as soon as possible. Upon meeting one new believer, he asked, Brother, how long have you been saved? And the young man replied, Three months. And the pastor said, How many have you won to the Savior? The young man said, oh, I'm just a learner. The pastor shook his head and said, young man, the Lord doesn't expect you to be a full-fledged preacher yet, but he does expect you to be a faithful witness. Tell me something. When does a candle begin to shine? When it's already half burned up? The young man said, no, as soon as the candle is lit, it begins to shine. And the pastor said, that's right. So let your light shine right away. Let your light shine today. Today, tomorrow, and the next day, every day. Let your shine every day, every year from now on. Make telling the good news and living the good news your New Year's resolution. So let's pray. Almighty God, help us to truly put on the clothing of Christ in this year to come. Help us, Lord, to have the peace and the patience that Jesus had. Let us put on the character of Christ, and most of all, put on the name of Christ, that we share with others the love that Jesus has for us and has for them. Lord, help us to be a witness for Christ, and you call us to be. As St. Francis of Assisi once said, Lord, help us be a witness each and every day. When necessary, help us to use words. Lord Jesus, anoint us with your grace and with your spirit and help us to live for you and shine the light of your love and your presence in our lives each and every day. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's sing one more hymn this morning. Our final hymn, our last hymn will be Joy to the World. Joy to the World.
remember, as we share the benediction today, to rec record your attendance. Uh, go ahead, just go to the website and let us know that you are here with us, either live or in the recording, watching and being a part of our worship and praise this morning. And now, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of God Almighty be with you now and remain with you forevermore.